Miami Hurricanes have just been crystal balled to land this blue chip top South Florida base defensive back. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So for this one defensive back, it's crystal balls and on three RPM predictions. And Miami did receive an RPM for another local favorite defensive back. So we have a lot to talk about today. I'm Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and writer for allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. You'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And I'll tell you, another theme of this episode is going to be Miami looking to continue that Miami Central pipeline. And who better to talk about all of this with? Than the man, the myth, the legend, our boy Blue, who is, uh, I'm telling you guys, uh, nobody works harder than Larry Bluestein, who's all over Florida, all over the Southeast, covering camps, uh, helping get the word out there on so many of these top recruits. And he's also a radio star at 560 WQAM. Blue, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Kind of last weekend parlayed my two favorite things. I was at state wrestling uh, up in uh, Kissimmee and then made my way down the very next morning, bright and early to see the Under Armour camp down in Miami. So, uh, yeah, you know, this is a time of year, uh, spring practice uh, for colleges and spring practice for high schools surrounded by camps and combines. And uh, this is this is a busy time of year. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and Blue, I, I want to start with uh, you know, the player that I was referencing at the top is Amari Wallace, four-star safety out of Miami Central, which has become, I mean, it should always be, but it's been lately a really important pipeline for the University of Miami. So uh, Wallace uh, visited spring football practice this week, had some conversations with the recruiting sites out there, and, and the confidence level from those recruiting sites is pretty high because he's re- receiving Crystal balls on 24-7 sports. He's receiving RPM predictions, which is the on three version of that to land at the University of Miami. We're talking about a a four-star defensive back safety out of Miami Central. Blue, you've seen this player, I'm sure, countless times in person. What can you tell us about Amari Wallace? Yeah, big time kid. Um, really good size, five eleven, about one seventy five. Uh, type of guy that uh, you know plays safeties all over the place. Last year against Chaminade in that nationally televised game, came up with a key uh, interception. Um, yeah, you know he's quick. Uh, he he reads extremely well, and then you know you go against some of the uh, top receivers. Excuse me, as uh, Central has, so you get you know you probably get better work in practice than you do in games, especially when you go to schools like that. But um, yeah, I'm excited about him, and uh, you know he's been around for I think he's uh, played if I'm not mistaken since his freshman year mm. you know i and and that's the type of guy you play at that level and you play against you know schools like bishop gorman and you play against some of those top teams in the country plus you know the the shamanades and schools uh, you know in the state of florida i think you got a i think you got one of these kids that uh really you know uh, the next level the next uh you know, the next group of kids that come in in this uh, in this next class of 2025. Um, yeah, I like him a lot. And I think he's just a perfect fit for what Miami's doing. Yeah. And he's not the only Miami Central star that the Hurricanes are really going after. Um Let's talk about the defensive lineman, Blue. So Randy Adarica, who actually has been in the past or in the recent past, crystal balled to Miami. So he's, you know, another one that people feel pretty confident could end up being a hurricane. And his teammate, Floyd Bucard, who actually he visited yesterday, Wednesday at spring practice and earned himself a Miami offer. So he just received a Miami offer yesterday. And obviously the Hurricanes have done well in the recent past, getting defensive linemen out of Miami Central. Ruben Bain, maybe you've heard of him. Uh, yeah, they get Armando Blunt coming in as an early enrollee this year. And the Hurricanes are trying to land some of 
their former teammates. What can you tell us about Adarika and Bucard? Well, first of all, let's take a look at Randy Adarika. This is somebody I was on two years ago. A lot of people never even knew who he was. I pointed out last year, watch him play again alongside of Armando Blunt and, and everybody kind of said, Hey, listen, this kid's every bit as good, maybe even better, you know, as a football player, he's, you know, we know Blunt's a tremendous athlete with his ability, you know, to throw shot and discus, but Randy and Enrique is a, a different level guy. He's, and what really impressed me is I got a chance to see him last week at the, uh, at the Under Armour and he's gained 25 pounds Good. of muscle. He's, he's a big kid. He's an interior kid. Now uh, he's got an opportunity to do some really, really good things. And uh, yeah, I've been on him and and I thought he was a big time kid when no one really even, you know, bothered, you know, all they were doing was stuck on Armando Blunt and some of the other guys. And I, I think that some of the analysts and, put air quotes in there uh probably thought that uh you know he was a level below and i disagreed from the beginning i said if you watch him play he's always around the ball and he's got good size he's very instinctual and um he's big time kid floyd ricard's the guy that they just got he's from mobile christian he's a canadian kid uh so i guess when you were telling me before could it be floyd bouchard i guess maybe Maybe back home in, in Canada, that's what they probably call him. Uh, <laughs> just took over last week at the uh, at the Under Armour event. People never even saw him before and uh, kind of singled him out and said, oh, my God, look at this guy. And, yeah, big kid, strong, very quick. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, learned how to play this game at a, at a smaller level. Um, you know, he was only 6'1", 170 when he started playing, and uh, now he's uh, yeah, he's a man. And uh, having he he and Randy Adarika up front um, is just going to pop pop Central right back into the uh, into the spotlight. Two big time kids. I mean, not just average kids. They're just two big time kids that can make a difference at the next level, and they've already shown what they could do at this level. Well, when we come back, I want to go from the Miami Central pipeline to the Chaminade Madonna pipeline because the Hurricanes did receive the on three version of a crystal ball earlier this week to land Chris Ewald Jr. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of his. I know Blue's a huge fan of his as well. And yeah, Miami just got a lot of important players, a couple of important players from Chaminade in this past recruiting cycle. They'd like to keep that going. And you know what? We'd like to keep it going right here. We are only getting started. We've got the man, the myth, the legend, Larry Bluestein with us. We'll talk some spring football as well right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. You want to keep it locked. And I know you're keeping it locked to eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. To the everydayers, if you'd like to take your everyday experience to the next level, sign up to become a Locked on Canes insider. You can click the link in the show description below. When you're a Locked on Canes insider, you receive text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa with spring practice updates. We're very heavy on those on the days that they practice. Recruiting scoops, breaking news. You can get that all by becoming a Locked on Canes insider. Try it free for 14 days. Just click that link in the show description down there. And then if you like it, after two weeks, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there with Locked on Canes insiders. And Larry Bluestein, who is uh, the ultimate insider, is with us. You know, so Blue, I mentioned it's not it's not just uh, Amari Wallace who Miami has received uh, predictions to land 
uh, this week. Uh, but earlier this week, I think it was Stephen Wagner from Kane Sport logged an RPM prediction for Miami to land Chris Ewald Jr. Uh, obviously, um, there, there's been some momentum here for a long time, ever since uh, Ewald uh, decommitted from Michigan, was originally a Michigan commit. Uh, Miami has been seen as the front runner. I'm not guaranteeing he ends up at Miami, but I, I know Miami's put a lot of work into recruiting Ewald, and you watched him at Under Armour Miami camp this past weekend. You've seen him play before. Uh, give us your scouting report on Ewald. Yeah, I've watched him ever since he started playing at the high school level. This kid's a big-time kid, no doubt about it. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, my only question a couple of years ago was his size. But last week when we were watching them go through their drills and uh, uh, standing next to John Santucci from USA Today, and we were remarking, I said, look how big Chris Ewald's getting. I mean, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a kid that already had great instincts and tremendous talent. But you couple that with him adding some size, and he added a couple of inches and maybe about 12, 15 pounds of muscle. And I'll tell you what, he's going to be a premier kid. You know, he if you look at Michigan, they, they, they wanted him because of the fact that, you know, he was a guy that was very talented, knew the game. And I guess they were projecting ahead, too, because at the time he's only in the ninth or tenth grade. But then, you know, I mean, now as people look at him, I mean, I looked at him and Mika Fitzpatrick's brother the other day, and I'm thinking, whoa, those are pretty good and pretty physical kids. And uh, you know, I have a feeling that, you know, he comes aboard in Miami and uh, it's only going to enhance the secondary. And, you know, at as we, as we mentioned, you know, you take a look at Wallace and some of the other kids that they're looking at. And uh, that's what they're trying to do, Alex. They're trying to build, you know, major talent at every position. And uh, you bring in somebody like him in this next class and uh, you've got an upper echelon kid, a kid that's one of the best in the country. You know, I'm not a big star guy, but I mean, I think from a talent standpoint, um, you know, proven on the field, he comes to play and, you know, he's played excuse me, he's been playing uh, the seven-on-seven, seven, you know, elite seven-on-seven seven level this uh, offseason. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's only a, it's only fitting that a kid that, uh, you know, especially as you mentioned, with guys like Zaquan Patterson and and a couple of the other kids from Chaminade who have made their way to Miami, Smith and uh, some of the other kids, that uh, he'd be a great fit, no doubt. Yeah, there were a, a ton of recruits on pra at practice on Wednesday for Miami, and, and one of those who uh, certainly passes the eye test that I, I got to look at is uh, four-star linebacker Tarvos Alford, TJ Alford, who is going to be blue. He's going to be making his uh, verbal commitment somewhere at the end of this month, March 30th. TJ Alford is going to be choosing between Miami, Ohio State, UCF, Florida State, and Tennessee. And, you know, Alford, uh, he did say that uh, he's probably going to make it back to another practice at Miami even before he announces. So he'll probably make another unofficial down here, which is a good sign, especially because he's not, he's not local. He's from Vero Beach, which is, you know, a few hours away. So it's nice that he's making so many trips down here. Uh, again, he physically, he looks like he's the real deal. Is he the real deal, Blue? Yeah, he's a real deal. It, I got a chance to watch him as a ninth and 10th grader. He went to Fort Pierce, John Carroll first. And uh, he played for Mickey Grudy, who was uh, a St. Thomas Aquinas graduate. And Mickey did a tremendous job with him. But, you know, when you get in a position where you want to get to the next level and you want to see, you know, what other competition you go against, Vero Beach is a bigger school. They play bigger, you know, programs than John Carroll did. Um which takes nothing away from the kid's ability or, you know, takes any nothing away from John Carroll, right. but yeah, he's, he's the real deal. And you have former hurricane up there, Randy Bethel, who's been a graduate of Vero and who's been up there forever. And I guess when he sees somebody that he feels that can, you know, play at that level, um, uh, I think that he kind of says, hey, listen, you, you'd be a great fit. Uh, Miami had a defensive end a couple of years ago that, uh, you know, recently transferred uh, who was equally in a Vero Beach kid and kind of followed that same path from coming to Carroll to Vero Beach. So, yeah, this this kid's got the goods and he's had the goods for a long time. And 
The great thing about him, and he's not afraid to, to mix it up with people. He's not going to hang and stay away from events. He wants to go and he wants to prove that he can compete with anybody. And that's what Miami needs. And that's what everybody needs, but that's what Miami needs. They need fearless kids. You know, the Josiah traders, you know, guys who are not afraid to, you know, come in and, and say, Hey, listen, you know, I belong right away. And that, that's the attitude that, that Alfred has, Alfred has. And I think that, uh, you know, Miami lands him and he's a big time kid. And it just shows you that he's being recruited by a lot of big time schools for that reason, because he's one of those difference makers. He's just not somebody that's uh, going to come in and blend in. Well, and you mentioned Jojo Trader. So let me, let me transition now to spring football. You blew, I've been out there for the first two practices and Jojo, he already looks like he belongs, right? I mean, early and you know, the, the truth will really be told once pads come on and all that. Like, I, I don't want people to to get a little too crazy when we're talking about, you know, individual and seven on seven type of drills. But uh, I've been really impressed so far with Jojo Trader. Like he he was even uh, and, and I don't mean this as an insult to this player, but he even got the better of Daryl Porter at least once yesterday, which you know is a huge compliment to Trader going up against Miami's top cover guy and veteran defensive back. I think there's a lot to work with there. And I've seen some good stuff blue from Nye Carr uh, as well. And, you know, Ray Ray Joseph uh, looks like he's uh, he's potentially ready to take that next step. He's been really good in practice. So, you know, something I said yesterday, Blue, is I'm, I'm starting to feel like when that next transfer portal opens in mid-April, uh, I think probably the number one, I, I would have told you maybe, I don't know, a few weeks ago, maybe uh, getting another wide receiver is the top focus. Uh, I think defensive backs should probably be the top focus because Miami looks pretty thin right now, specifically at cornerback. And there's a lot of young players at cornerback and safety. I'm feeling better about receiver right now than I did a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well, rightfully so. And, you know, you look at a kid like Josiah Trader. Here's somebody who started as a freshman at Miami Central, played defensive back for one play in the state championship game, picked the ball off, went 96 yards. So this is somebody who has been elite from the beginning. You know, he came through the, you know, the same youth stuff as, as all those guys that are coming out of uh, Rod Max, uh, you know, program up in uh, North Dade uh, area that, and uh, certainly uh, uh, the, with the Ravens and yeah. certainly a kid that has gotten it from day one. And I think that the addition you know, just as somebody who's more of a consultant, but also somebody who knows the position of Sly Johnson, who uh, work with all these guys, and people don't realize it, but he, you know, he's worked with these guys, these guys since they were eight and nine years old. He's the one that totally found uh, Xavier Restrepo and, and and made him into what he is today. He's he went out and got Elijah Moore, who's been in the NFL now for four years and uh, arguably one of the best receivers. He's the one that went and got Dan. Daniel Braverman, who was drafted by the Chicago Bears. Um, but having him on campus along with Kevin Beard, he, you see, he teaches more of the craft and he's going to get a lot out of these receivers. And uh, with Nye Carr, uh, big time kid as it was, and all these kids need now is refining because they went from a high school level where they dominated and had good competition, obviously. But now they're going to play with 22, 23 year old kids, you know, that are grown men. And uh, they're going to have to understand that just being faster is not always going to be the deal because if you don't have technique and you can't get off the line and they jam you and, you know, they, they, they disguise coverages on you, you have to pick that up as well. And I think that's, uh, uh, you know, the combination of what Miami has teaching these kids now uh, will go a long way in how they develop. And we already know that Ray Ray Joseph is a smart young man who picks up a lot of things. His uh, elite outside speed gives him an opportunity like Chris Johnson to kind of dominate anytime they get on the field. Well, excellent stuff here from Larry Bluestein. We're going to continue the conversation because there's a couple more prospects I want to talk to Blue about. Plus, when Larry Bluestein makes his way down to spring practice, who's he going to be looking for at the University of Miami? My friends, we're not done yet. You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. 
We are so happy to welcome Fire TV to the Locked On family. Guys, I've been using the Fire TV stick for a while now, and honestly, I don't think I can live without it anymore because I always need to be watching not only live sporting events, but sporting events on demand. I also guilty pleasures with a lot of movies and TV shows. I'm telling you, Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as that Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or college basketball tournament coming up, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created... Fire TV channels to deliver constant supplies of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. And that includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. And speaking of Fire TV, you can watch Locked on right there. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked on sports today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Uh, Larry Bluestein, a, a really important uh, recruit for Miami, is four-star Homestead wide receiver Cortez Mills. And, you know, he might continue to get even more important because I, I did see earlier this week, now he's not committed anywhere yet, but I did see uh, a new crystal ball prediction for my guy, Vernell Brown the third to land at Ohio State. And obviously it makes me sweat a little bit because I know this is somebody Miami really wants, but so is Cortez Mills. And Cortez, from what I understand, Blue, had a, an amazing showing at Under Armour Miami. Tell me about what he did out there. Well, not only that, as he had an outstanding uh, junior year at uh, Homestead last year, playing in the state title game against um, against St. Thomas Aquinas and being on the same stage as was a Jamie French uh, from Mandarin and also uh, some of the other key wide receivers. Big time kid came out as a ninth grader and already started to dominate uh, and one of the catalysts. Um, yeah, he's another in the progression of the University of Miami kids that you want to get a uh, local kid uh, from the South Florida area and uh, runs extremely well. Um, great pattern, great, great, great route runner, uh, tremendous hands, uh, beat you in a lot of different ways. Yeah, he's a he's a must get uh, if you want to keep that level and that progression of elite receivers alive. You know, another player, uh, he's class of 2026, so we'll, we'll have to wait a little longer for him. But I, I did see him at practice yesterday, and I saw his dad. Dia Bell was visiting Miami yesterday, the American Heritage quarterback. Uh, his father, former NBA player Raja Bell. Uh, Blue, um, t talk about the way that Dia is progressing now as he's heading into his junior year of high school. You know, very few people have worked harder to get better. Uh, you know, he goes everywhere, camps, he goes to combines. Last year he visited Notre Dame and he visited BYU in Utah and, you know, made his way around the country, you know, to kind of test himself. He's even, along with Malachi, uh, Tony, playing for Team California in the seven-on-seven. Seven. So he gets an opportunity to mix it up with a bunch of different guys, and you know, when he plays. Um very athletic, has got great size, uh, you know, could have opted and gone the easy way and play basketball because he's a ma an amazing kid on the court too. Yeah. Uh, but I think a credit to his dad and, and to him to get him, you know, involved in football at a very young age and to keep him there and not just use it as, okay, well, we're going to play basketball, you know, let's play football for now, but, 
it, that's what he wants. Uh, and I mean, the kid could go drop 25 a night if he wanted to on the basketball court. I, you know, he's uh, sort of like uh, Dallas Turner was, you know, Dallas Turner could have easily dropped 24, 25 points a game in basketball every night. But, you know, he, he figures that the NFL is going to be and we'll find that out this uh, this draft. But D is one of those guys, a very intelligent kid. Um Arm strength is, is getting much, much better. Uh, he's he, he reads defenses a lot better. You know, had some trouble early on, but they thrust him into the competition as a sophomore. Oh. And um, I think he impressed his very first game at the, you know, as a starter and at the um, – at the high school level was against St. John's Academy of Washington, D.C., certainly no slouch, and he ended up going for 300 yards. So he's one of those guys, and plus, you know, we know that Roger went to FIU, but the entire family's Miami-oriented. The father worked there. Uh, Roger's father worked there for four decades. So, you know, and he used to hang out there all the time. So there's a little bit of a, a kind of an affectionate love for the university of Miami. And I think if it came down to it, uh, you never know, but he's being pursued by everybody right now. And, and rightfully so Alex, because uh, he's what they call a worker and uh, you know, he's not going to just, you know, sit back and say, well, you know, I'm an athlete and I can play this and I can play that. He goes and he competes, and you got to give somebody like that uh, a lot of credit. Blue, uh, when you make it down to spring practice uh, soon, who are you looking forward to watching most down at the U? Yeah, obviously Cam Ward. You want to yeah. see what how he his look, he looks really good, Blue. He looks yeah, good. yeah, yeah. No, he's. Um, I'm sure he's everything advertised and, uh, certainly when you put a lot of people around him, I want to see night car. I know he's really good. I've watched him a lot on tape. Um, uh, you know, I, obviously we talked, you know, about some of the other kids. Uh, I want to see how Chris Johnson's progressed. I want to, yeah. you know, he's got the speed, uh, you know, I want to see how some of the linebackers, because I, you know, you mentioned the defensive backs as being a, a position in need. Well, linebackers, you really only had a handful last year. You got a lot of young kids kids that came in, uh, you know, you know, via the, uh, the recruiting last year, and we didn't really get a chance to see a lot of them. Uh, but I want to see how some of the life, especially with Mauanoa out, uh, for the spring, that's going to give a lot of these other kids like a, a Popo and some of these other kids to kind of stop, step in and then show what they have. And, uh, you know, they need somebody else. They need somebody more than Mauanoa because they're going to, People are going to kind of utilize coming out of the backfield and go to different sides and try to pair them. But uh, Wesley Besaint needs to have a strong um, a spring as well. But to, to answer your question, obviously, Cam Ward, I want to take a look at some of these other guys that, you know, were younger last year. You talk about Daryl Porter Jr. I want to see. You said he's looking really, really good. I want to, you know, see because I think he was a – type of kid that really needed to get some more reps and then, uh, you know, high level against high level competition. And right now from a state speed standpoint, Miami's receiving core is really fast. Yeah. So this is going to give him an opportunity to, to test what they're going to face during the regular season. I love it. Uh, Larry Bluestein does a fantastic job every time he joins us here on Locked on Canes. And guys, when you check out Blue's radio show on 560 WQAM in South Florida, you can listen to it from anywhere on the Odyssey app. It is, it is the most informative show in the country. Like when you're talking about getting the scoop on high school and college football and not just that sports, you were talking about uh, the states and wrestling this past week. Like you're going to get so much on the South Florida high school sports show. Blue, you're going to be on this coming Monday. What can people hear? Yep, six to eight. Uh, hopefully, the, we're going to be joined by you to kind of recap what's been going on down at the camp. A lot of people like to hear that. Uh, we're, uh, we'll have a college coach every week. We have some high school players. Uh, you know, uh, over the last couple of year, uh, weeks, we've had Ben Hanks and uh, Ben Hanks Jr., who's obviously one, yeah. a, a tremendous talent. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of kids that, you know, kind of last week we had Caleb Harris, uh, arguably one of the best offensive linemen in South Florida at St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, so we're going to get a lot of uh, uh, coaches and, you know, obviously we want to kind of 
interject a little, a few other sports last week. Uh, as you mentioned, we had uh, Vic Balmaceda, who's uh, South Bay wrestling team, won for the 11th straight time, the 24th overall. He had 10 wrestlers in the finals, wow. and he had a senior who finished his career 137-0, and never gave up a takedown to oh, the God. opening whistle of his final match. <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> how about that? And you wow. know you're, you're an MMA guy, and you know how – uh, grueling wrestling could be, and uh, he's on his way to Iowa State. Well, only fitting uh, that Kale Sanderson went unbeaten during his Iowa State career. Uh, so we, every week, uh, we're going to have somebody good, and I, and that's the one thing that I, I like because we, you know, we know that everybody's not in tune to you know, like high school or college. And, and this gives them an option. Uh, you know, we have seven guests every week, which is far more than anybody else it gives you an option. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to listen to this person, you don't have to, but uh, we hope that uh, we fill a need in, in the community, you know, for local exposure. You certainly do. And thanks so much to the everydayers for joining us. You guys know what to do. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button subscribe you listen to the audio version whether it be on amazon on apple Podcasts, spotify google wherever you get your pods make sure to subscribe and rate us five stars if you want and we'll talk to you again next time on another episode of locked on canes part of the awesome locked on podcast network your team every day